Welcome back to Blackjack. This is about my fourth or fifth time trying to record this because XSplit decided that it doesn't like my webcam. So I was on tech support for like an hour and they have me updating a driver. So and I just saw the camera stick. Oh, okay. It looks like we're getting into this. Everyone has different reasons for studying martial arts. All right. For personal honor, to improve health, and for kicking the crap out of the other I people. I saw like with Ryu, a little bit into reuse intro. Of Street Fighter. By the way, I'm just going to take this opportunity to repeat. I have my Street Fighter shirt on. Also, Ryu is super boring. You know, I don't... I don't know why they insist on making him the headliner in the games because he's so boring. Oh my god. Okay. And Jin Kazuma, the power hungry martial arts master of Tekken. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And Although it's at least our job aware to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. On desk of they were saying Ryu's model is so hard to work with. He's the hero the world never knew. His name means prosperous, plentiful, and abundant. They also he got into the that. They said the way he it's is written isn't Ryu. dragon. That's a pretty epic introduction for a hobo. Although Ryu does at mean a young dragon. Age, Ryu was adopted by the martial arts master, Goken. Under Goken's training and beside <laughs> his fellow student, Ken Masters, Ryu was trained in the art of Ain Sutsuki. Not in his current model. Fist. This ancient fighting style was specifically designed for murder, which automatically makes it the best martial art ever. <laughs> well, Goken actually taught Ryu a slightly okay, altered Okay, this is where it cut off. Suke. Inspired by karate, kenpo, and judo, Goken's bit. version was a generally non-lethal one. Prevents him from uh, fighting lady. dirty. But the deadly side of the martial art Did lived not on work. in Goken's brother, Akuma, who would ultimately prove to be Goken's downfall. One day, Ryu and Ken return to their dojo to find their master dead. Eh, kind of. He got better later. But Ryu no finger that, painting so joke? he swore to wander the earth perfecting his abilities until he could take down Akuma himself. With the Unsetsuke yeah. style, Ryu is a master at close quarter combat. With such techniques as the Shoryuken uppercut and the flying hurricane kick, he can take down most foes in mere seconds. He's like a living helicopter of pain, but he can also use his key nice. as a weapon, firing a fireball of energy from his palms. Say it with me. Goken's version of the Ansetsuken also taught Ryu several defensive techniques, including the skill to parry most yeah. other attacks with precise timing. And with all these awesome powers of Dude, ass, Ryu eventually made his way to the World Warrior Tournament. With, with his skills, Ken. Ryu quickly reached the top of the competition. Awesome. For the title of World Warrior, he faced his toughest opponent yet, Sagat. Who ended up beating the shit out of him. But Sagat was surprisingly yep. a pretty good sport. So uh, when he fight thought the fight part. was over, he offered Ryu a hand up. And in that moment, something dark swelled from within Ryu's consciousness. A force so fierce and destructive, he couldn't contain it. And he lashed out. With an Such enraged a serious shot and an moment, explosion you're of blood, mess Ryu it up emerged with that as champion over Sagat's near-dead body. Ryu's dark side had been unleashed. This was the Satsui no Hado. A violent inner force so extreme, its name actually means surge of murderous intent. Yeah! If I ever knowingly father a child, I know what I'm naming him. Under the influence of the Satsui no Hado, no Ryu falls into an uncontrollable rage known as Evil Ryu, where his physical and spiritual power skyrockets. He can even teleport and use Akuma's favorite technique, the Shun Goku Satsu, which literally translates to instant hell murder. We're already getting okay, into shit. Now I gotta have two kids that I care about. The Shun Goku Satsu, or the Raging Demon, is a fatal move which attacks the very soul of its victims with the gravity of all their past. Ryu, sins. you never told Who us you fought Ganondorf. But while the Satsui no Hado is a manifestation outfit. That's of a new one on me. He has real killer B, huh? The light. This is called Mu no Ken, or the power of nothingness. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. What's he gonna do with nothing? By focusing on mental and spiritual refinement and detachment, Ryu has achieved the ultimate state of being. This begets that a power strong like enough to match and even surpass the Satsui no Hado. Oh yeah, that's how Goken survived Akuma's hell murder attack. And now Ryu's got the same power. Look at him go. <laughs> with put all himself this into power, stasis Ryu's for like some 10 years. Feats. 
Aside from winning the World Warrior Tournament, he's dodged bullets, destroyed skyscrapers, and survived Balrog's Gigaton Blow. Yeah, remember him from that boxing match we did? He's strong enough to kill an elephant in one punch. Ryu is so tough that he survived getting impaled. And when he goes I didn't that mode, manga. he can just walk through gunfire. He's strong enough to lift this enormous boulder over his head. By estimating the boulder's volume compared to Ryu's height and a and Oro on top of composition, it. we can determine it must weigh at least 36 tons. Plus, there's a guy sitting on top of the boulder, and he's lifting his own boulder. Man, Oro's cool. While Ryu's <laughs> fighting record Oro for death perfect, battle? his wins far outnumber his losses. He's defeated his friend Ken, the dictator M. Bison, and even a genetically engineered super warrior named Seth. But those were just say genetically engineered super warrior in this in the series. And if you don't know, Akuma shattered an island with a single punch, split air's rock in half in Australia, and jumped to the ocean surface that thing's from sacred. 4,000 feet below in three seconds that course, while you destroying know, a submarine. What is sacred That's about 3,000 miles per hour, by the way, and I guess he just powered through the bends. Yeah, he's definitely final boss material. And yeah. so, years after Akuma's attack on his foster father, Ryu faced him for the final time. And with the power of Mu no Ken on his side, Ryu was victorious. Nice, All in a nice. day's work for everyone's favorite street fighter. Cammy? You power to actually defeat that beast. Now show it to me. Cammy, my power is not to defeat. My god, those are some thick fingers. This is the power to push forward. You're so boring. If you met Jin Kazuma when he was just a boy, you wouldn't figure he'd grow up to be one of the most dangerous men to ever live. Unless it's like some Hunter Hunter shit right there. Super deadly and super crazy family. Jin was raised by his single mother, who taught him the Kazuma family style martial arts after his father abandoned them. Uh, story of my life. No, really, those training days with Mama Boo were some of the best times of my life. One like day, Jin's sweet mother hot rod flame. Approaching. She told him that if anything were to happen to her, he should seek out his grandfather. And speaking of uh, sweet hot rod flames, this is before sweet hot rod flames, but uh, remember I work at the Portland Art Museum? They're having an exhibit right now about sleekly designed cars from the 20s and 30s. It's very nice. You should come see it. Hey, Hachi, meet you. Right on cue, a big ass ogre showed up and attacked him. When Jin came to, his mom and Shrek were nowhere to be seen. Don't you hate it how moms are always right? Thankfully, it wasn't too difficult for Jin to find Heihachi. Yeah, he's super yeah. rich and has a really tall building. Kinda hard to miss. So rich, in fact, that Heihachi owned a multinational conglomerate empire with its own banking, weaponry, military forces, and, just for kicks, a martial arts tournament. This begs the question. The Mishima Zaibatsu versus the Kanzuki Zaibatsu. I mean, uh, Heihachi could no doubt defeat Karen in a battle, but who wins on the open market? <laughs> Whoa! Why didn't Mom tell him about this? Time to collect on those missing Christmas ah, presents. Ah, my favorite granddad. movie. Well, she also forgot to mention that Heihachi is a terrible father who's obsessed with throwing his own son off cliffs. Nobody's perfect, I guess. Regardless, under Heihachi's guidance, Jin trained and perfected Why did she want him to go find style. him anyway? With two types of martial arts mastered, he's got all sorts of techniques that can pack a punch. Such as the flash punch combo and the electrically God charged fist. lightning Is it done with a god hand? Or his famous ten hit combo <laughs> chain. Oh Once he gets you stuck in his flurry of punches and kicks, you're not going anywhere until he finishes you off with a classic dragon uppercut. With these talents and a thirst for revenge, Jin entered his grandfather's King of Iron Fist tournament. There he came face to face with the ogre once again. Yep. But instead of, you know, mother's killer. It said earlier that his mother, mother was nowhere to be found. Jin just killed him. Nice job, stupid. There goes the only lead you had. Yeah, nothing tastes better than sweet, sweet revenge. Except for maybe mom's cooking. Well, unfortunately, it didn't last long, because he got shot up by his grandfather. Oh, that son of a bitch. Of course. Mama always said never trust the bald man who tells his barber, give me the Wolverine. But Jin had a little surprise for Heiachi, and for himself, actually. Thanks to his family line, he has inherited the dreaded and parasitic devil gene. Of course he has! A flying, laser-shooting demon person! 
With a chain and bandages. Who is that? I've been working on an artificial digestible version of the Devil Gene myself. Oh, yeah. Hello, Stanley. Lee. happens to be the chewy fruit candy in the blue bucket. <laughs> what did you do? Too dark. Well, my dog, Jack Spaniels, was wandering around scrounging. Jack, Jack Spaniels. And, uh, I was wondering why he suddenly grew horns and wings. You've got to be shitting me. Anyway, compared to his base form, Devil Jin's Make strength, speed, and durability Hondo? are better than ever. Devil Jin is strong enough to throw people dozens of feet and even smash them through walls. For this instance in particular, he's pushing a Hachi through the limestone wall of an Aztec pyramid. To do this, Jin must have struck the wall with force equal to at least 10 tons per square inch. Hell, Jin is stronger than this you guy just... called Raven, who can toss around this That's giant just war blade. robot named Nancy. When compared to real-life robots of similar size and accounting for additional weaponry and gear, this machine should weigh anywhere between 15 to 30. Okay, before I forget it, um, the wall of that temple, I think when they mapped it, they did it with cardboard boxes. <laughs> okay. Tons. Also, Jin is fast enough to dodge bullets and, and that guy fly was plain into blade. orbit. And survive falling all the way back down. Which puts his maximum flight speed over escape velocity. That's more than 25,000 miles per hour. He can even punch so fast he can That would be more than uh, right. Baumgartner, wouldn't it? punches faster than the speed of sound. Nice. Remind me never to give him a high five. Totally reasonable, considering his grandfather can catch bullets in his teeth from just 20 feet away. And surely Jin can do better than that. Heihachi doesn't even have the devil gene. Started That's World right. War III. The devil gene traces back not to Heihachi, but to Jin's grandmother. Who freaking rides tigers? As a result, Heihachi's son, Kazuya, inherited the devil gene and passed it on to Jin. Kazuya's powers are basically the same as Jin's, and he's shown just how far the devil form can go. He shot a blast Oh, that's why she had to call upon Akuma. And survived a satellite or rather, how she did out of Independence Day. This is the same laser that once shot the robotic soldier Gunjack. By measuring the blast radius and resulting devastation, the laser's firepower appears to equal 3.7 megatons of TNT. You know the bomb that got dropped on Nagasaki in World War the sequel? Yeah, this laser's like 176 of those hitting all at once. While the devil gene can sometimes be difficult for Jin to control, it provides an enormous advantage against almost any foe. With it, he's won three of the four King of Iron Fist tournaments he's there's entered. Like four? He's defeated but there's Heihachi, seven Tekken Kazuya, games. And even the supposed OG Devil Man himself, Azazel. Too bad he had to start World War the Second sequel just to find him. Kind of a dick move. Jin's certainly no angel and hardly a hero. Still, when it comes down to it, he is the child of destiny, and not even the Devil's blood can seal his fate. Can you understand? All this fighting is pointless. It's never gonna end. It will end with this bloodline. And that is why I fight. So he's all never right, having the kids. Are set. Let's end this That's debate for once and for all. But first, all this tug of gin is making me want to pour a glass and No. Go away. That's blue apron. Okay. Uh, uh, it seems like Jin has the upper hand as far as power, but he also has a loss of control in his ultimate incarnation, whereas Ryu's ultimate incarnation is, like, ultra-focused. It is literally Zen. It's literally Mu. It is nothing and everything. I mean, I know that sounds corny, but it's, like, actually really deeply philosophical. As a concept, not necessarily in Ryu's case. <laughs> in Ryu's case, it's a little corny, but, like, as a philosophical concept, it's really cool. Uh, although, once you attain enlightenment, is it actually possible to lose it? I mean, that's what Ryu does. I admit I don't know much about Zen Buddhism, but is it possible to lose enlightenment? <laughs> because once you're enlightened, you're not susceptible to temptation, right? But he is, because he goes back to being a normal guy, then he can be evil Ryu again, and eh. Hmm. 
It depends on if power or focus is going to get it, because Jin is so much more powerful. But Ryu is going to be far more in control. I'm gonna... There's a little... Oh. That, that is not a little hair, that is a very long hair. <laughs> oh, Cam, what the heck? By the way, to do my own little uh, food plug here, Arctic Zero is like really good substitute ice cream, and it's really low in carbs, so I can have it. <laughs> it's also uh, low lactose, so I can have it. I love ice cream, but ice cream does not love me. But this does. <laughs> I'm not getting paid, but you know, if somebody from Arctic Zero wants to sponsor me, I would. And if somebody wants to get me that Street Fighter manga that they showed that I said I don't have. Okay, so. Let's get going, in the words of Tracy. Yeah, they said Ryu was really hard to map. And they had to remove a lot of the shadows on him. Now we get some color. Into her eyes, in the heart of battle. Remember that? There was a preview. They also said there's like one move that he does that's like exclusively Torian, and they said we would be able to figure it out, but I don't know. And I also don't remember which one. Is. And the music is specific to this battle too. Sounds like it should be on uh, OC Remix. Those are some heavy duty tatami mats. They should be getting ripped to shreds. Oh, come on, you gotta do the weird face. That's what everyone does when they get hit with that. You can do better than that. Come on. Hey, he knows that it didn't end the battle. Dang. Okay, now the floor's getting broken. So he can fly with those and not just glide. Over a cave. There we go. Why does he have a hole in his chest? It can't be his heart, because your heart's like down here. Unless he has a very weird heart condition. I guess if it works fine, it's not a condition. At least not in the same sense. Kapow! Now we're gonna get another transformation. There we go. They did his eyes better than they did last time where it looked like they had a big old bulge. And I walk the path of a 
true warrior. Oh, that was it? Okay. Oh, oh, I get why it's called the power of nothingness now. There's nothing left in his chest. This one was a tricky match to decipher. Both Ryu and Jin had many displays of incredible feats, but very few truly showcased the That didn't the upper seem like a game power. ender. We know that in their base forms, both could lift around 30 tons and move at supersonic speeds. Also, we know Ryu could maintain a much better level of control and discipline in Muno Ken than Jin in Devil Form. Yeah, hardcore Tekken fans know he had pretty good control over it in that Blood Vengeance movie, but it's pretty inconsistent with game canon. Even Tekken's right. creator has said it's not canon. Also, Jin's fall from all <laughs> defeat was impressive, but it is hard to quantify due to his presentation. Even if we assume we are to take it literally, a man of Jin's size landing at terminal velocity would equal around 18 tons of force. All right. But to find their limits, we had to scale them to comparable characters. Scaling Jin to his father Kazuya was logical. Kazuya survived that 3.7 megaton laser blast, and it's clear right. it was necessary for him to be in devil form to do so. Kazuya's own laser blast was strong enough to help kick off a volcano's eruption. A nice. Feat which could require up to 100 megatons yeah. of TNT. I didn't actually but catch up, but that was what triggered the eruption. Estimate, and its actual potency is likely much less. Since their power comes from the same place, and Jin's even defeated Kazuya before, it's safe to say Jin can do all this too. As for Ryu, we Makes knew sense. exactly who we had to scale him to. Let's talk about Akuma. First off, just to prove the scaling is reasonable, Ryu and Akuma share very similar abilities. One of the, both were trained only in the other winners style, from Street Fighter. The they fought each other several times, and when the story was all said and done, Ryu emerged, ultimately victorious, based on his skill alone. Now that that's out of the way, let's watch Akuma punch an island to death. With a single strike, Akuma managed to break apart an entire island so thoroughly that Ryu, who was on the island, was left floating helplessly in nearly clear. Had she survived Akuma's raging demon, Jin could, likely could as well, yeah. It's possible Jin's Kazama and Hachigo blood could resist attacks on the soul. However, this does not negate Ryu's other advantages. That's, that's appropriate, yes. Near water. Assuming the island is somewhat circular, we've estimated the volume and deduced that in order to fragment the island like this, Akuma's punch must have been over 400 megatons of TNT. That's more than four times stronger than anything a devil gene has pulled off. And nice. Ryu takes blows from this guy all the time. Sure, Ryu wasn't getting hit with 400 megatons. And Devil Jin has absorbed evil energies like the Satsui no Hado before, but only after defeating his opponent. Even still, there's no reason to assume he could do the same to the Muno Ken. Yeah, because he's only absorbing evil energy. Every time Akuma landed a punch, but the most a Devil Jin carrier has ever survived amounts to less than 1% in comparison. Even if Jin could survive a strike as strong as Kazuya's he survived volcano, it, well. it still pales in comparison. The fact that Ryu survived being on the island as it was blown apart helps justify this scaling Without too. Without us. Well, yeah. Jin still takes the speed advantage with that flight Faster into orbit, but it not. doesn't mean much when the difference of power and toughness is this massive. When it came down to it, Ryu's strength, durability, and control were just too far out of Jin's reach. Wait, Wiz, we forgot a feat. You remember that Gunjack robot? A later model of Jack happen. once destroyed a meteor. Couldn't we just scale Jin to that? Well, it's no. unsupported by canon material, but even if we did, guess who destroyed an even bigger meteor? Akuma. Akuma. Damn. Well, <laughs> get up, everybody. Ryu's yeah. taking care of business. Akuma saved the, the world, is which is funny. Then again, he's always been... Like, Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive commentary on the episode, just click on the no box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get it by clicking the link in the description. You know this by now. Samurai Jack versus Acro Samurai. That's gonna be fun. Oh, that's gonna be nice. Okay. Goodness, this webcam is interesting. <laughs> I got okay, my tooth for some reason doesn't line up with the others, but I had braces for years. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I I kind of thought everything went too fast. Like there wasn't enough. Uh, with so many specialty moves, they just kind of went so quickly. You know, all the moves kind of just flew by. Literally flew by in some cases. Um, 
I mean, I like that Ryu won, and I think that I figured out why, you know, beforehand. Uh, problem is, you know, fighting, figuring out fighting games, so much of it is utter bullshit. I want to know who the canonical winners of all the World Warrior tournaments are. I mean, if he's only won... One that can be proven, and I want to know why the other one is suspect. Maybe that's the one that he was up against Sagat for. Like, they were iffy about his title, since he was such a poor sport about it. And then, of course, you know, Go Hibiki gouged out Sagat's eye, and Sagat killed him, and yeah. He did a lot better against Ryu, I tell you what. I mean, you know, in a way, killing Go was self-defense. Let's see. Ryu, though, I've just never been into him. He's just always been so boring. There, I'm lining up my foot with the... <laughs> with the pictures. Oh, jeez. I just... Ryu's just so boring, and he never looks the same twice. Like, in his first game, he had red hair. He had red hair! Oh, heavens, let's see here. Um, I don't really know much about Kazuya. Oh. I watched uh, Maximilian Dude and Yo! Video Games play through Tekken 7, and that showed a lot of different characters, and that had the volcano part that I referenced. Um, I thought the volcano just went off because it is a video game and we need a cool place to fight. <laughs> Your favorite street fighter. Is, can, is Ryu anybody's favorite street fighter? Tell me in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> this thing never can go long. Never go long what? Doesn't go down as far as I think it does. Oh, heavens, I am so sleepy, but it is only 3.37 p.m. Wake up several times during the night. Don't know why. Anyway, next battle should be interesting. I don't know much about either one of them, so it'll be fun to learn. Um, I know that's one that's been requested for a while. Hmm... I still need to get my votes in again. Um, I mean, I voted a few times. I think the one that I that I want that will never happen um, is uh, Elliot from Leverage versus Agent Forty Seven from Hitman. I think that would be really interesting. However, during the last Desk of Death battle. One of them mentioned having a whole bunch of obscure or old Pokemon manga on his desk. And that leads me to think either Yellow or Haruta. Because Haruta versus Marcus Damon from Digimon Data Squad would be amazing. Especially because it would not be a Pokemon battle. It would be the two of them. Yeah, and Polion and uh, Agumon would just be standing off to the side like, Wait, what? What? <laughs> I never back away from a fight. I'm going to be the best street fighter in the world. And for once, it's not going to have to do with street fighter itself. <laughs> uh... <sighs> I still want to see Domino versus Harley Quinn, and I know they gave us that in a DBX, but that was the wrong Domino. That was Domino from Marvel Comics. I went the Domino from Pokemon. I think that would be interesting. I mean, I think Harley would probably win, but it would be fun to see them lined up. I mean, I did a video about why I'd want to see that. Um... You know, I did a video about uh, Ryoga Hibiki from Ranma One Half versus uh, Okuni from Samurai Warriors. That would be an easy win for Okuni because as powerful as Ryoga is, his 
powers are based on his own depression, and she has the ability to cheer anyone up, so... Eh, and then, of course, um, another uh, big one I want is Ranma Satome from Ranma One Half versus uh, Sakura Kashigano from Street Fighter, and that would be really fun, especially since their ultimate moves are triggered by some very oh, bizarrely specific things. His is from cats, and hers is from a suntan, so... <laughs> So about this one, I don't really know. Um, like I said, it just kind of, like... I, I did like the callback to um, the Daigo Perry, but that was done with Ken, okay? That wasn't done with Ryu. I know they play very much, uh, very similarly, but... Still... Gosh, the Daigo Perry is insane. Have you ever watched that? It's incredible. You know... He has, like, no health. Chun-Li's coming at him. Uh, with her... Uh, what is her kick called? Thousand Gale kick? I don't remember. I know Honda's equivalent is 100 hand slap. But I don't remember what uh, Chun-Li's... Multiple kicks is called. Um, she's coming at him with that. He parries every single one. Uses that energy to knock her out. It was amaze balls. <laughs> and you know, there's there's a mode in one of the games where you can try to reconstruct that. But um, you know, even there, you're given instructions, and it's still really hard to do. But God, imagine just doing that on the spur of the moment. You have to know exactly how many times she kicks exactly what the timing is, time your counterattack or your, your parry perfectly, and then get another attack in right off that. Ooh. I think I've spent more time talking about the Dago parry than I did about the actual battle. Anyway, I have to go spend time with Athena because when I went downstairs to check on something, um, she had uh, gotten out of her cage... Well, she was out of her cage, but she managed to climb down onto the floor and was going through the baseboard again. So she has been a naughty bird today. So I'm going to go. Um, I'll see you guys in three weeks. Bye. Oh, I might, might have a guest next time. Who? You'll have to wait and find out. If I don't have the guest... Okay. Okay. I was going to say, if I don't have the guest next time, then I'll tell you who it would have been. But um, I will probably forget that I said that. So remember when I had a co-host last year for uh, Balrog versus TJ Combo and Lucario versus Renamon? I might be getting her back just for uh, a couple days. So, all right, I will see you guys later.